This is the international year in Sports 86, and it does seem like we say this about every year, but this has been another special year. I'm Dale Hansen, and in this next hour, you'll see again why sports play such an important part in everyday life. We live in a world where governments put up borders and barriers between us as people, but the people who play the games tear those barriers down. It's the personalities that make sports special in our lives. A Jack Nichols at Augusta, a Willie Shoemaker in Kentucky, or the great Maradona in Mexico City. And it's those great stories in sports we'll share with you this next hour. They produce an association with Adidas, the world's largest manufacturer of athletic footwear and apparel. And sponsored in part by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Let's wait till January to finish last year's business. And the NFL works the same way. It was January 26th when the Chicago Bears and the New England Patriots met in New Orleans in Super Bowl XX. The eyes had it. The black and blue eyes the Chicago Bears hammered out in one of the most lopsided championships in NFL history. Rarely has one team so dominated its competition as the Bears did in this game and the season that preceded. Super Bowl 20 in New Orleans, the New England Patriots trying to match Chicago's fierce kamikaze style. And with the Bears going along, at first it almost worked. I tell you, it started off a little rough. I, I screwed up. I called the wrong play when Wally fumbled. That was my fault. And uh, other than that, I think, uh, and I think we played pretty well on offense. Well, it was supposed to be a slant play, but to the other side. And I, uh, I just had a mental lapse, you know, early in the ball game. It's, it's one of those things that uh, you know shouldn't have happened and did, and, and we just overcame it. But if anything brought the Bears out of their January slumber, it was Patriot hands turning colder than a New England winter. For all of their early heroics, the red, white, and blue could only manage an early field goal. The three-pointer was soon matched, and it foretold of the coming avalanche. If one word described these bears, it would be diverse. Off the field, they shuffled through the regular season, each seemingly marching to his own beat. But once on the field, the transformation occurred, and they became one, a team. Jim McMahon would defy his coach, Bears management, and the NFL. But his ability earned his teammates respect in the game's most valuable player award. But perhaps the biggest celebrity in this game, refrigerator William Perry, a wasted draft choice six months before. But his touchdown put the Patriots in the deep freeze. Oh, yes, uh, that was uh, uh, age 44 uh, off the left side. And, uh, and uh, Coach Dicker called that play. And I was just overwhelmed about it when he, uh, when he called it. I was so happy. Because I thought I was going to get out there and, just, and block for Walsh and just, and just knock another uh, linebacker down. Under the guidance of defensive genius Buddy Ryan, Chicago's defensive crew evoked memories of the days of Dick Butler. Warned during the season for trying to knock quarterbacks not just down, but out. These were the most feared men in football. Nothing, it seems, could make a Chicago Bear win, except the memory of Papa Bear George Hallis, the founder of this team and the NFL's winningest coach. Although he died three years before his team would reach this championship, the brand of football was definitely his, and it is his legacy that will always be this team's signature. Looking like a child among men, quarterback Tony Eason was no match for the black and blue. He soon gave way to veteran Steve Grogan, but the results were the same. There was no mercy. So 
know in the end it was almost a surrender. 210 years after the revolution, the Patriots had finally given up. Mike Ditka had begun the season unsure of his future in Chicago. But after a nearly flawless season, there were no questions left to answer. The Chicago Bears, 1986 Super Bowl champions. It's a common practice for those in the United States.